Good morning. Welcome to CADEX TV. My name is Frank Fortunato. This is a live broadcast from Princeton, New Jersey. Today is Friday, October 8th, 2010. It's 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time in the U.S. It's 4.30 p.m. in London, 12.30 p.m. in Bermuda. In Mexico City, it's 10.30 a.m. If you need to reach us during the broadcast, you can phone in toll-free at 1-866-67-CADEX. Overseas, our AOL instant mail address is TV. On this day in history, in 2005, along the Pakistani-Indian border, a massive earthquake killed 86,000 people. Birthdays, the American civil rights leader and three times presidential candidate, Jesse Jackson, is 69 years old today. Now to our main news. Well, the first story is this. If uh, you tried to watch us yesterday, you couldn't. We were off the air because of a failure from our uh, communications provider called Broadview Networks. Our T1 line was down when we called up. It, uh, we were forced to be on hold for a matter of uh, a couple of dozen minutes. And then finally, when the call was answered, we were told they didn't know anything about the service interruption. We were put on hold for another 15 minutes, and then they told us that the problem was not their fault. This is the second time in possibly seven months that we have been forced to miss a broadcast because of the failures of Broadview Networks. This will not happen again. We have a backup system in place with Comcast Business Services, and we will not miss another broadcast. Our apologies to all of our viewers, and I checked the logs. There were a significant number who did come to the site at 4.30 p.m. Eastern Time expecting a broadcast, and for that, we humbly apologize. You know, you make time out of your day to watch the show, and uh, we regret that we were unable to be on. Now to other news, certainly more important. A chemical tanker off the coast of France, pictured here in this map, it's a little bit off the uh, Brittany Peninsula, is carrying thousands of tons of a gasoline product that's being towed into port today by a tugboat. This was after a collision at sea. The ship is a Maltese tanker called the uh, uh, Uranus and uh, it is about 400 feet long. It was built in 2008, and apparently uh, at some point last evening, the ship, which is carrying a gasoline product called heavy pie gas, uh, was involved in a collision uh, with a bulk carrier about 60 miles southwest of the uh, tip of Brittany. Uh, the ship that it collided with uh, was called the Hanjin Rizal, and it was heading from Amsterdam uh, to Port Marghera in Italy. Uh, the French Navy is on the scene. Uh, everybody is saying that there is no leakage right now. The water is clear, and they hope to get it into port, most likely the port of Brest, uh, sometime later this afternoon, French time. Well, the uh, situation in Hungary seems to be stabilizing somewhat. Uh, one interesting note is that the Danube River seems to be absorbing the massive toxic red sludge spill. Um, it uh, has come out now that the spill itself was about 184 million gallons. The BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico was 200 million gallons. Uh, and that lasted for several months, beginning back in April. So in one day, actually one evening, um, approximately 90% of the uh, total volume uh, released in the Gulf of Mexico over that five-month period was released in Hungary. According to the uh, Danube River Protection Group, the consequences do not seem to be that dramatic. However, uh, Greenpeace is saying that there is a risk of pervasive and lasting damage because of uh, high concentrations of toxic substances in samples of the sludge. Greenpeace is saying that there are surprisingly high levels of arsenic and mercury, um, with rain giving away to a dry, warmer weather period now. Uh, the mud is turning to air airborne dust, which can cause respiratory problems. The number of dead are now up to five. This morning at Orlando Sanford International Airport in Florida, an Allegiant Air MD-80, similar to this plane, as it was preparing for takeoff, had one of its engines catch on fire. 147 passengers and crew were evacuated right from the jetway. They did not have to use the slides. It was Allegiant Air Flight 700. It was heading from Orlando to Roanoke, Virginia. It was actually parked at the gate. This occurred at about 7.15 a.m. this morning. Uh, no one was injured, and the uh, fire is under investigation. 
Well, in the United States, the uh, labor market shed more jobs than expected in September. Most of this is due to uh, decreases in state and local government jobs. The Labor Department said the total non-farm payroll shrank by 95,000. Wall Street had been expecting an 8,000 person loss. Private sector non-farm employment actually expanded by 65,000. The unemployment rate remains unchanged at 9.6 percent. Um, the headline to this is that the census workers and government layoffs have contributed to most of the job reductions and Wall Street is cautiously optimistic that what has been signaled is in fact an uptick in private sector employment. The stock market is actually up about 52 points right now. We'll go to a word now from our sponsors and come back with the rest of the news. I have a little addendum to our third story about the uh, red sludge going into the uh, Danube River. Um, the source of the sludge is the Hungarian aluminum manufacturer, MAL, and it's now been confirmed that MAL is covered against both property damage to the plant and liability claims through Allianz Hungaria, the Hungarian subsidiary of Europe's largest insurer. This was confirmed by a spokesman for the parent company, Allianz in Munich, um, there is no information yet as to the insured sum, whether or not the policy would actually apply or be triggered. Well, there's some big news coming out of Oslo, Norway today. Uh, they've awarded the Nobel Peace Prize to jailed Chinese dissident Lu Xiaobao. Uh, Mr. Xiaobao uh, was awarded the prize by the Nobel Peace Prize Committee this morning. The Chinese government has immediately responded, condemning the selection as a blasphemy and described Mr. Liu as a criminal. The Nobel Committee cited his efforts to use nonviolence to demand fundamental human rights in his homeland. Um, China reacted quickly, although their announcement was blacked out in China, of course, so nobody knows that Mr. Liu was selected, nor does anybody know the Chinese government's answer. Chinese Foreign Ministry, just for the record, said the Nobel Peace Prize is meant to award individuals who promote international harmony and friendship. Lu Jiabao is a criminal who has been sentenced by Chinese judicial departments for violating Chinese law. Awarding the Peace Prize to him runs completely counter to the principle of the award and is a blasphemy to the Peace Prize. And just for good measure, the Chinese government said that giving the peace prize to Mr. Liu will damage the relations between China and Norway. Remember, it is the very firm view of the producers of this program that the Chinese have a very big problem. Here's some very forward thinking from Munich Re. The German reinsurer has launched a performance warranty insurance product for solar panels in the United States covering concentrator photovoltaic systems, CPV, manufactured by the solar energy firm Solfocus. 
the reinsurer has collaborated to develop the product, which it claims is the first of its kind for CPV systems. Here's what the thing does. Munich Re will ensure Sol Focus, the maker of the uh, panels, against the risk of its systems failing to live up to the 25-year energy performance warranty that they issue to their customers. If any of the panels do not meet the terms of the warranty, the insurance policy is triggered, and Swiss Re will make up the difference through its specialist insurance subsidiary based in the UK called Great Lakes. The new product is part of Munich Re's strategy of providing coverage to renewable energy products with a view to tackling climate change. They're also looking at uh, electric cars and wind farms. Good for, Swiss, uh, good for Munich Re. If I said Swiss Re, I apologize. Good for Munich Re. Well, in Detroit this morning, a federal judge upheld key provisions of President Obama's landmark health insurance law. In a 20-page decision, the federal judge refused to issue an injunction to halt preparations for putting federal health care reforms into effect in 2014. He also dismissed major points of the suit that require, for example, Americans to buy health insurance and a pe penalty that penalizes those who don't. The opinion was the first court opinion to rule on a suit claiming that Congress had exceeded its authority by imposing the requirements. The uh, judge said, um, and this is very interesting actually, uh, the judge said that the Congress for the past 200 years has regulated interstate commerce. In fact, it once required citizens to buy muskets and ammunition. And thus the suit uh, brought by the attorneys general and by some states uh, was without foundation. It's certain that it's going to be appealed. Well, about uh, a total of $11.1 million was awarded to the American actor Larry Hagman. Uh, here's Mr. Hagman now. Now, you may not recognize him, but if you look at this picture, and we'll quickly pull this one up, this, of course, is Mr. Hagman uh, as J.R. Ewing. Uh, Mr. Hagman was uh, uh, awarded the money by uh, a court opinion, actually it was a, uh, a FINRA opinion, against Citigroup Global Markets for uh, uh, having caused Citigroup Global Markets allegedly breached a fiduciary duty and misrepresented uh, several items of the uh, portfolio they were holding for him. Uh, as occurs in most securities arbitration awards, the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority Panel, FINRA, did not spell out the details of the case, but the $10 million awarded in punitive damages suggests that a conclusion of serious wrongdoing had in fact been found. Citigroup is going to have to pay this to charities of Hagman's choice. Hagman himself will receive $1.1 million. Citigroup said that they're disappointed and disagree with the panel's finding and they are reviewing their options right now. Well, for the final story, everybody knows that uh, Britain is facing a huge, huge budget deficit. Um, you never thought it would come out in uh, connection with the Royal Navy. Here's a picture of a ship that uh, was in operation under uh, King Henry VIII back in the 1500s. Well, yesterday, the uh, Royal Navy uh, offered to the government a selection of cuts that would reduce the Navy to its smallest since the time of Henry VIII. Under the plans, the number of British Royal Navy ships would be cut to about 25. 25. This is all being done in uh, a desperate attempt to preserve the two new aircraft carriers that are being built. One of them is just about finished and the other one is in the uh, planning stages right now. The admirals have apparently mortgaged everything to persuade the government not to abandon the uh, $10 billion program. Uh, the ships could end up being delayed for years and also redesigned to save money. Uh, in theory, one aircraft carrier uh, would be built and then immediately mothballed in order to avoid increased cost. A uh, meeting of senior cabinet members yesterday stopped short of a formal decision. Uh, however, insiders are saying that the belief is now that both ships will be built. There are also options on the table, including uh, delaying delivery uh, or, in fact, designing cheaper jets or even no jets at all to fly on the planes. Navy has argued that having two carriers is vital if Britain is to retain its place as a top-ranked military problem, uh, top-ranked military uh, power. Um, 
let's just look and see what the uh, the final tally of this would be. With the two carriers, this would reduce.